Welcome to part four of my makeup collection series for 2024. Today we're going to be tackling lip products. We have lipsticks, we have liquid lipsticks, we have lip glosses, we have lip balms, we have lip oils, we have lip liners, and we have lip care. We have all my lip products in one place. We're going to do some swatches, we're going to do mini reviews, we're going to talk about possible replacements, we're going to talk about how much or how little I like the formulas, all the things that we love in a makeup collection video. All the makeup collection videos that I've done so far for 2024 and my 2023 playlist will be linked in the description box so that you can watch at your leisure and at the end of the makeup collection series i will stitch all the videos together if you want a nice long juicy one if you like this type of content make sure that you like the video and if you want to make sure that you don't miss anything that i post on this channel make sure that you subscribe let's get started with the lip products and we're going to break them down by categories Let's get started with lip liners, not only because this is the area where there's less variation from last year, but because it's probably one of the parts of my collection that decrease the most after my declutter at the end of 2023. So let's get started with lip liners. So this is all my lip liners right here. One of the things that I did in my end of year declutter last year was get rid of any duplicates that I had because the way that I built a lip liner collection was for the most part buying two um, sets of ColourPop lippy pencils and there were some repeats. So in that declutter, I got rid of any duplicate shades that I had and then what I have are only one kind. So let's start with the ColourPop lippy pencils. So first off, let me just show you all my ColourPop lippy pencils. Again, I have so many because I bought sets. So let's just start with the shade Chi Chi. That's what that looks like. Then we have the shade Flattered. There it is. Then we have the shade Beeper pretty beigey. I did a pretty thick swatch of that one. Then we have the shade Hoopty right there. Then we have the shade Obvi, another kind of nude beigey kind of shade. Then we have the shade BFF4, much darker brown. Then we have Boarding Pass. This is one of my favorite shades. Then we have Overtime, which is a red. There it is. Then we have BFF2, which I think is a pretty popular nude brown. I think that was sells pretty well for ColourPop. Then we have the shade Little One. This one's probably one of the palest shades that I own or that I kept. Um, from the winter. This is the shade I Heart This. It's a pretty cool um, fuchsia. Then we have Good and Plenty. Again, another one that is more of a pinky nude shade. Then we have BFF2. Getting more into that brown territory. Then we have Mamacita, which is like a pretty deep purple. There it is. Then we have Love Bug. Has a little bit more brick red. Mm, let me see if I need to make a light adjustment. Then we have the shade Hot Cakes, which is again, a cooler tone red. I think this one has a little bit more blue in it. Then we have the shade Hard On, which is more of a magenta. Then we have the shade Absolute Zero, which is an orange. It's a pretty nice orange. Then we have Good and Plenty. I think this one I do have a duplicate of. Yeah, I think somewhere up there, if there's a duplicate of Good and Plenty, but that one's a nude that I use to like calibrate some other shades. Then we have the shade Control, another cool tone brown. Then we have the shade V Cute a more dusty lavender. Then we have the shade LBB, more of a burgundy Bordeaux. Then we have the shade Control. I think I also have a duplicate of this one because again, I love my browns. Yes, this is the not as new, the, that's the newest, um, the newest one of the two ones, the two that I have. 
This is 951, one of my most used nudes, as you can see by how raggedy this pencil is. Then we have the shade, what is this called? Mm, I don't know what this says. Oh, curvy, I think. Something like that. There it is. That one's slightly cooler toned. Then we have the shade Shot Clock. For a long time, this was like my go-to pinky nude. That is like a little bit more pink. Then we have the shade Brink. More of those nude browns, pinky nudes. Then we have Bumble. And my last four color pop, we have the shade Bossy, a red. Dial Up, a pretty strong hot pink, but this one's super fun to wear with a lip gloss. Then we have the shade Frenchy, which is a warmer toned red. And last but not least for the ColourPop lip liners, we have X Factor, which is one of those like wine kind of purple shades. So these are all my ColourPop lip liners. In total, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32 ColourPop lip liners. And I, you know, I've said this before on my channel, I maintain that ColourPop is a pretty good way to just kind of like get yourself the lip liners that you need at a pretty affordable price and you need very little other than that, which is pretty much what I did. And then this is pretty much the rest. Sorry, let me just bring this one over and let's talk about these two first. So this is the Wayne Goss Essential Lip Pencil in the shade Deep Nude. Let me show you what it looks like down here. It's a pretty easy to work with brown and for the most part is a pretty creamy lip liner. I really enjoyed it. I got this one in my Beautylish Lucky Bag of 2022 and then I got the exact same one in my Beautylish Lucky Bag of 2023. So it's still in the box. I'm just going to give it to my sister next month when I see her because I don't need to. But I really enjoy the formula and I'm excited to see what Wayne Goss does when he rebrands. Then we have an old, 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 old red elf lip liner. I have this much left. Not a lot. Let me just show you what it looks like. I have no idea what this is called, what the formula is. Nothing at all. I've had it for years and years and years. And I would absolutely love to finish it by the end of 2024. I just have to make sure that I use it either with a gloss or every time I wear a red. Then we have the one lip liner that entered my collection in 2023, which was the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat. This is a mini in Pillow Talk Intense. Love this shade. My one qualm with it is that the lip liner is actually a lot darker than the lipstick. So you have to be careful with that. And last but not least, you have my two Lisa Eldridge lip liners in Velvet Cinnabar and Velvet Myth. So this is Cinnabar a spectacular shade and here is velvet myth lisa eldris is a brand where i personally recommend buying the matching lip liners with the lipsticks because i really do think that her colors are really nuanced and if you really want a good match get the get the lip liner when you buy a lisa eldridge lipstick that's my opinion Believe it or not, these are the only liquid lipsticks that I own. I only own these three. One from Rare Beauty, one from Lethal Cosmetics, and one is from Mented. So this one is the Rare Beauty, um, I don't know what these are called. These are called like lip cushions or something like that. And this is the shade Courage. A very, very comfortable formula. Like it's kind of moussey. I really like the applicator too. And this is what it looks like in my on my hand i think it's a little bit um of a formula that doesn't quite set again it's not really a liquid lipstick it's more like a mousse lipstick i really enjoy it because it's kind of a whip texture that doesn't completely dry your lips down and i appreciate that the color is a little bit pink for me but nothing that i can't fix with a brown lip liner that can calibrate things a little bit then we have this um, Lita Cosmetics Chimera Liquid Lipstick in the shade Voltage. It's a really vibrant orange. 
This one does dry down and um, it dries down pretty matte, but I really enjoy the liquid, the liquid lipstick formula from Lethal. I'm definitely open to trying more and trying more shades. Um, and it does leave a really nice finish on the lips. It doesn't crack in a weird way, which I appreciate. Last but not least, we have this Mented Cosmetics Liquid Lipstick in Blacker the Berry. I don't think that the shade is available anymore. And at the same time, Mented was recently sold. That's what it looks like. I love this shade. It looks beautiful on the lips. Mented was recently sold. Um, I think that the founders are going to stay um, somewhat involved, but it remains to be seen if the formulas are going to change or anything like that. So this particular shade I've been trying to find to replace and I haven't been able to. So it's going to have to be something else if I want a similar a similar shade. I already know of a couple of brands that make shades that are similar like to these because I expect this one to maybe dry down in the future or something because I've had it for a long time and I use it fairly frequently. Liquid lipsticks are something that I feel were like not as available for the last couple of years and now they're slowly coming back. I would love to try more from Rare Beauty, more from Lethal and I also have my eye on the Lisa Eldridge Velveteen lipsticks. Um, because those are liquid lipsticks, I also want to try the Air Blurs from Charlotte Tilbury. But this is it for liquid lipsticks. All right, let's go ahead and move on to satin lipsticks. These are all the satin lipsticks that I own. Let's start with this one because this came into my collection last year. This is a Mob Beauty lipstick. I don't remember the exact name of it because these things don't have like any names and see like the component just came out. This is a refillable lipstick and this is... It's a cream lipstick. This is the shade M34. I know what they're trying to do with like the whole refillable components and stuff, but I personally find the packaging kind of annoying. There's the shade. It's really, really creamy. And to an extent, it can be quite messy. Like you get a lot at once. It's one of the complaints that people have of like, um, tubes that like click up like the Maracuja Juicy Lips from Tarte and that kind of thing. Like I've had that issue with this lipstick the entire time. Like it's hard to like get a, an application that is not messy, but it does wear really well and it's very comfortable on the lips. Although I do find it sometimes like after it wears for a few hours, it gets a little bit heavy. So I don't know, not my favorite formula and I don't really like the packaging because it's not super stable in my opinion. I got this in my Beautylish Lucky Bag. Then we have this Wayne Goss Luxury Cream Lipstick in Chestnut. Looks like this. Incidentally, I also got it in a Beautylish Lucky Bag. And there is, I'm just going to do the shade next to it. Right there, very similar shades. Um, the Wayne Gauze is creamier and in my opinion, less messy. I'm excited to see again when he does his rebrand, what his lipstick formulation looks like. Then we have a Revlon Super Lustrous Lipstick in Kiss Me Coral. I have no idea if this shade is around because this lipstick is embarrassingly old. That's what it looks like. It's, again, one of my attempts to try to find an orange that works for me. That's how much I have left. Um, sometimes I have to wear that combined with other lipsticks. I usually mix it with a brown to kind of take it down a notch, but I enjoy the formula and I think that Revlon is a solid drugstore option for satin lipsticks. Then we have two Becca lipsticks. I got these in the Becca closing sale. One is um, in the shade Sable. This is called an Ultimate Lipstick Love. Shade Sable, again, another like brown. This is probably one of the creamier ones that I have. I wear Sable quite a bit. It's kind of one of my go-to lipsticks for like warmer tone um, looks. And then the other shade that I have is Cranberry, which is a little bit more of a neutral cranberry color. There it is. So when I want like a bolder, more like wine colored lip in a satin formula, I go for this one. Then we have um, this pomegranate lipstick, which is a lip fetish sheer color balm. Technically it's a lip balm, but I wear it as a satin lipstick and it is a kind of like a cherry pop red. I consider it a lipstick because it's in my opinion, quite pigmented to be a balm. 
really, really enjoy that formula. This is my go-to summer, easy summer red. Last but not least, we have a lipstick that is depotted, but it, it just fell off of the component, the bullet broke. So I just depotted it into this container and it's the Huda Beauty, um, I don't know what these are called. I think it's called cream lipstick and this is the shade Habibi. I've made quite a bit of progress here. I think I will be able to finish this one by the end of 2024. A really nice cool tone mauve. I love this shade, but I don't trust the Huda components anymore. So I'm not sure that I would buy the shade um, in the same component. I might find a similar shade from another brand, to be honest. Sneaky satin lipstick that escaped me before we move on to my one lip crayon. This is a mini of the Bare Minerals lipstick in the shade Honesty. I would love to finish this thing, but it is getting really old, so I don't know if I'll be able to finish it before it expires. It is one of those pinks that I feel like sometimes doesn't quite wear very well on me and looks a little too pink. So I have a love-hate relationship with it for sure. I've had it for a really, really long time. It's probably expired, but I'm gonna I'm gonna make a push to finish this um, before the end of the year. And then I have this one lip crayon, which is from the Zoeva Premier collection. This is in the shade Extreme Costumes, and it is a really, really pretty red. This is a matte lipstick. Ah, see, that's the other issue with it is that the <coughs> the other issue with it is that this is falling off of the component, so it makes it a little tricky to use. Who? It's also quite dry. It is quite dry. I don't know that this will survive very long. But this is what the shade looks like, Extreme Costumes. It's a red that has quite a bit of blue. So it makes my teeth look super white. I love it for that reason. But this felt really tuggy and uncomfortable to wear. So I don't know how much longer I'll be able to keep this um, lip crayon. I might have to replace it. When I do replace it, I'm probably going to replace it with a NARS lip crayon. These five are all my matte lipsticks, and I'm now noticing that these are all high-end brands. I do think that these brands make excellent matte formulas that really, really make a comfortable wear and give you really uniform and rich color payoff. So these are brands that I would definitely buy from in the future and that I've enjoyed very much so far. So first off, we have the Pomegranate Matte Trends Lipstick in full-blooded. This is what it looks like. I've used this quite often. Let me just show you what that color payoff is like. See? A really rich purple. Then we have my two um, Lisa Eldridge Velvet Matte Lipsticks in Cinnabar and Myth. So this is Velvet Cinnabar. Such a luxurious component just beautiful. You really feel like you're getting a special product with Lisa Eldridge. This is Cinnabar, a beautiful shade, quite possibly one of my favorite all-time lipsticks. And then Myth, looks like that. And let me just see how close in shade is it to full blood, full bodied, full blooded. It's actually not that close in shade. I feel like um, Velvet Myth has more pink in it. So it's a little bit closer to like a Bordeaux color and this is like a deeper purple. Then we have these three mini Charlotte Tilbury Matte Revolution lipsticks. This is my first foray into the Charlotte Tilbury lipstick formula. This one is Pillow Talk Intense. See how much lighter this one is to the lip liner? I, it doesn't make sense to me. Then we have Pillow Talk Medium. Finally, a pinky nude that works for me. This is the one. And last but not least, we have Walk of No Shame, which is a little bit of like a more brick red, but it still has a little bit of pink in it. I really love these three shades. I have them in a mini right now, but I fully intend to purchase full sizes when um, I finish the minis. Hopefully you can see these swatches a little bit better there. So um, Pillow Talk Intense is, this actually isn't matte, is it? 
let me see. I mean, even these, like the matte formula of Charlotte Tilbury is really, really creamy. Like these are all very, very comfortable mattes. These are definitely not your mom's mattes from the 90s. Like these are not mattes that are gonna like crack your lips and, you know, devoid them of all life. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, these are mattes that are like, they're different. They're very, very comfortable matte formulas. Like they don't really dry the lips. They wear very well with the color payoff for several, several hours. Like when I tell you that these are high-end formulas, these really are high-end formulas, in my opinion, completely worth the price. When it comes to Charlotte Tilbury, I think that mini lipstick sizes are great to really get a gauge on whether you like one of her lipstick formulas or not. Here are two other matte lipsticks that I almost miss, both reds. This is a uh, MAC um, Powder Kiss lipstick in Shocking Revelation. I got this as a gift with purchase years ago at the MAC store when I bought like a holiday present. So it's a red that has actually quite a bit of pink in it. Um, I really like the Powder Kiss formula. It's very, very comfortable and you get great color payoff. And then in this little depotted container, I have a uh, Givenchy Rouge Velvet in the shade 37. I could not part with this when it broke off of the component. Absolutely not. Look at that red. Beautiful. Beautiful. One of my favorite reds. And this matte formula from Givenchy is super comfortable. Super, super comfortable. It will not dry your lips. This one feels really pillowy. This one is really, really smooth. And again, just comfortable, but with great color payoff. So both MAC and Givenchy formulas that I want to explore further. Next up, let's talk about this small cluster of lip balms. So this one, I actually haven't used this particular one, but I've finished a whole one of these before. This is a mini NARS Afterglow Lip Balm in Laguna. And I mean, on me, it wears pretty clear, but it does have a tiny, tiny bit of tint. So if you are paler than me, you might get a little bit of tint out of this. Super comfortable and nourishing. I love to have it in my bag, like as a summer lip balm. And I'm actually gonna take it with me this summer to see if I can use it up throughout the summer. Great formula from NARS. Then we have a Cold Classic Clinique Almost Lipstick in Black Honey. I've made quite a bit of progress on mine. I think I got mine like two or three years ago. I had a deluxe sample of it and I used it up and then I bought the full size. I love this uh, particular shade because I think it's really versatile and on me it does offer some pigmentation. It goes really well with most makeup looks. So again, this is one of those um, shades that is like when I don't know what lipstick to wear, this one will usually be a safe play. Then we have um, my, my tube of GlossierBalm.com in the birthday flavor, it does smell like Pillsbury Funfetti. Um, and it doesn't really have color, but it does have little glitter flecks. So in that regard, it's kind of fun. I personally wear this kind of like in between lipstick applications or if I don't want to wear anything and I want to wear a clear lip balm for whatever reason or maybe want to have like the little glitter particles so I have some stains from pink um, lip liners um, if I want the little glitter particles that this has to kind of infuse with the lipstick but honestly I don't think that this is that great of a product I think like Hannah Louise Poston says it really is just petroleum jelly like your good old tube of tub of Vaseline or Aquaphor will do the exact same thing than this is supposed to do. Probably better and probably for a lot less money. Don't waste your money on it. I got this in a subscription box. I would not purchase this like by itself. Then we have um, this Burt's Bees Lip Gloss in Tulip Spring, which is a pretty berry colored lip balm. I'm just going to squeeze it on top here. For a lip balm, again, you do get quite a bit of pigment and it is really shiny and comfortable. So it's a nice one if you want some berry lips. And then we have a mini of this Pat McGrath um, lip balm in the shade Temptress. Oh, this is getting really messy. Holy moly. It looks like a lipstick, but the texture is, the texture to me is like an in-between a satin lipstick and a very tinted lip balm. These components, oh my God, look at that. That component is terrible and seemingly this is just kind of falling apart. So I have to be careful with it and 
kind of make sure that I hurry up using it so that it doesn't make a mess everywhere. So those are lip balms. Oh, I guess that technically this is a lip balm. Um, I got this as a gift with purchase from Pat McGrath. It's just a clear lip balm. It's white on the tub. I don't think that this is the most nourishing formula in the world. Sometimes I wear it, but not very often. As you can see, it's just clear shine. So if you want that, or if you just want something kind of quick to reapply that you can keep in your bag, sure. But it's definitely not the most nourishing formula in the world. It's not my go-to lip balm. I quite frankly forget sometimes that I have this. Okay, so here we have all the lip glosses that I own at the moment. Some of these I got in like a Sephora favorite set, and then the other ones I've purchased um, either in their own set, like the Mini Lawless, <coughs> or I've purchased them individually. Let's start with this one. This is the Tower 28 Shine On Lip Jelly in Pistachio. Why is this called Pistachio? I have no idea. This is one that I've kind of like, I have my, I have my seasons with it. Um, I use it sometimes to kind of take it down with, um, take bold lipsticks down a little bit because it's a really creamy kind of milky pink. Um, the formula is really nice actually. And I'm curious to try other shades from Tower 28. I actually think that the shade is slightly similar to this one, which is the Femti Gloss Balm Cream in Fenty Glow. Actually, no, this one has more pink and then um, the Tower 28 has more purple. This particular formula is really, really comfortable. The um, Gloss Balm Cream, I've never tried the actual Gloss Balm, so I'm curious to try that, but this I've enjoyed quite a bit. It is a really nice, nourishing, shiny formula, so I enjoy it for that reason. Then we have this uh, Pomegranate Gloss in Flesh 6. This is a mini loss gloss. This has, in my opinion, as much pigment as a lipstick. And well, this one is drying down a little bit because I'm almost done with it, but I love this shade. I definitely want to buy it in full size. And I don't know if it's quite visible there, but there's quite a bit of window here. I'm almost done with this one. I'll definitely be done with this one by the end of summer. And maybe I'll replace it when I shop um, Pat McGrath uh, Black Friday. Look how juicy that is and shiny. I really, really like that one. It's more of a lacquer than a gloss in my opinion. Oh, this isn't a lip gloss. That's a lip oil. Um, okay, what else we got? Nude Sticks Lip Glaze in Nude 06. Probably one of the oldest lip glosses in my collection, but one of my favorites. A really, like, neutral brown. Very comfortable on the lips, very nourishing. It does have a bit of a minty feeling. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be a plumping lip gloss, but it's just it just feels cooling on the lips. It doesn't feel uncomfortable, and I really like the shine on this one. Then we have quite possibly my favorite lip gloss formula at the moment, which is the Lawless Forget the Filler Lip Plumping Line Smoothing Gloss. This one is the shade Velvet. And this one is a mini size. This one is a little bit closer in shade to the Tower 28. And then we have the shade Nudie, also a mini. I got those two in a set. This one is a little bit more milky. So not a clear, it does have a little bit of pigment, but it's a little bit milkier than velvet. And then I have a big size in vel of velvet that I got in a Sephora favorite set. So I haven't opened this one because I'm using the minis, um, but I mean, I really, really, really like the shade. I've actually made quite a bit of progress in Lawless Velvet. So I expect to dig into that full size somewhat soon. And then these three lip glosses that I have left here are all clears. Well, this one's technically not clear, but it, works as clear on me. This is the Huda Beauty Silk Balm in Blushed. Sometimes it has a funky smell that I don't love, but it is one of the most nourishing lip glosses I've tried in a really long time. Very comfortable and gives a really, really nice shine on the lips. Sorry, it's a little gloopy in my arm hair. Solid, solid formula. I would love to try more from the gloss formula from Huda Beauty. Overall, I would say that Huda makes really solid lip products. Um, I just don't trust the like the satin lipstick component because I had that experience with the bullet, but I really like this one. Then we have the e.l.f. Jelly Pop Juicy Gloss. This is a clear, but um, this gives me what I like to call vinyl lips because it's really, really shiny and, you know, looks a little bit like a jelly. 
sorry for the um, lip liner stain. See how shiny that is? It is really, really shiny. And then this one, I often forget to use, but I actually don't mind it. It's the Milk Makeup Electric Glossy Lip Plumper. Out of all the lip glosses that I have that are supposed to have a plumping effect, this is the one that probably has the strongest plumping effect. I just feel like a tingle that kind of lasts. I would say it lasts for like about 10 minutes or so, but it's actually quite comfortable and quite nourishing. And I really enjoy the shine that it gives. I personally don't find it an uncomfortable plump. I just, this is one that I need to be a little bit more intentional in using because I, I do like it. There are some of the swatches of the glosses. See how shiny my hand is? Oh, that's neat. All right, we only have two more things to go. We have lip oils and lip care. These are all my lip oils and um, well, this is technically not a lip oil, but I use it as a lip oil. This is the Lethal Cosmetics, what is this called? It's a Lethal Cosmetics gloss. This is a shade Nexus. They marketed it as a gloss, but honestly, to me, this is a very thin gloss that wears like a lip oil. I love it though. I really, really like it. And I want to try more from Lethal Cosmetics in the future. This is quite possibly the most comfortable of all the lip glosses slash lip oils that I own. I love this one. I feel like nobody talks about the Lethal Cosmetics lip products. People should, because this is really good. Then we have this um, Sigma Lip Oil in Tint, Sigma Renew Lip Oil, I think is what they're called, which is supposed to be kind of like a nude brown. See, this is the opposite. This is marketed as a lip oil, and to me, it feels like a lip gloss. Like, to, on me, I feel it like a lip gloss, and it wears like a lip gloss. It's like a little bit more sticky than your traditional lip oil, and a little thicker than your traditional lip oil. So I don't mind it, but to me, this isn't a lip oil. This is a lip gloss. And to me, this isn't a lip gloss, this is a lip oil. Funny how things translate to different people in different ways. Different strokes for different folks, I guess. And then these are the six shades of the e.l.f. Um, Glow Reviver Lip Oil that I bought. I have reviews of these and comparisons to other lip oil formulas on my channel. So I'll make sure to link that video in the corner if you want to watch it. It's actually my most watched video on the channel, I believe, to date. So let me just show you the shades, although you can see those in that video too. This is the shade... Red Delicious. On me, they don't really translate to a whole lot of pigment. I have to do like kind of heavy swatches if you want to see a little bit of the color. Then we have the shade Coral Fixation. See, on me, they don't translate into color. This one is Rose Envy. This one I think has, yeah, this one has more pigment, Rose Envy. The darker ones do have more pigment on me. This one's Rose Quartz. That is, there it is, a little bit of a crystallized rose kind of. Then we have, what is this one called? Um, Jam Session. This is the darkest of all of them and definitely the one that gives me the most pigment. Oh, sorry, these are kind of bouncy. And then this is the shade Honey Talks, which is a uh, brown, like a cooler tone brown. I think that this is a solid formula. I think that e.l.f. knocked it out of the park with their lip oils. I don't know if they compare to the Dior. I have seen people compare them to the Dior. I can't speak to that because I haven't tried the Dior, but I do think that they hold their own and they are a solid lip oil option. These are about $7 a piece, if I remember correctly. So if you're on the market for a lip oil, definitely try the e.l.f. ones. Um, there's something for everybody. There's only one shade that is not here, which is the clear. I just... Given that at least two of them read clear on me, I just didn't think that it was necessary. I do have one more lip oil, and you can see it in my lip oil video, which is the Clarence um, Lip Comfort Oil in Honey. I have looked everywhere for it, and I have no idea where it is. I have it, or maybe I think I still have it and I lost it. I don't really know, but... <clears throat> I do have it, and I think that the Lip Comfort Oil from Clarence is the OG lip oil. Like That one really is a lip oil. I do think that the e.l.f. ones are lip oils. Um, they are, I think, a little bit runnier, and maybe, see, like here you can see it, that they are definitely a little oilier than like the Sigma, for example. 
um, definitely not a gloss. They definitely do wear and feel on the lips like lip oils. But if you can try the Clarins, I highly recommend it. But these these two especially, since these are the ones that are marketed as lip oils, are really, really solid options. Last but not least, we're going to finish with two lip care products. This one is the Fresh Sugar Lip Polish. Looks like that. I don't scrub my lips very often, but when I do, I use this. And it really does like lift the flakes from the lips in a really, really gentle way with the... Um, sugar crystals it's really not abrasive on the lips so i use it as a treatment maybe like every other week or if i wore a matte lipstick or a liquid lipstick that really dried my lips or if i'm doing lip swatches or lip try-ons um then i'll wear i'll use this lip scrub to like try to restore my lips and just remove the dry skin really gently and then of course my laneige um, lip sleeping mask this is the strawberry one and this is the full size. Um, getting halfway there, I think. I'm not um, repurchasing this when I finish it because I'm I have a really big tub of Aquaphor that I want to make some use out of. I do use that in like the calluses on my hands from lifting weights, on my feet sometimes, and any other like really extra dry areas. But this product has a reputation for a reason. I really do like it and I do think that it is very nourishing on the lips. I'm curious to try others. I'm thinking about maybe trying the pharmacy peptide lip treatment next. All right, this is it. These are all the lip products in my collection at the moment. Let me know in the comments if you saw any favorites or any um, products that you are curious to try yourself. Are there any here that made you a little bit nostalgic since I have some brands here that are maybe a little bit older um, or maybe some versions of products that are a little bit older? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and I hope to see you again for the last part of my makeup collection series, which is the big one eyeshadow palettes. I was thinking about making a separate video for single shadows because I do have a few, but I think I'm just going to lump them all together and just talk about all my eyeshadow collection together. I did do a dedicated video on all the indie eyeshadows that I had. So if you want a little bit of a preview of where my collection is right now, you can check out that indie eyeshadow video because it does have the majority of the indie eyeshadows that I own. Um, I have two that are not in that video that I do have right now. So that's gonna be the next and last part of our makeup collection series for this year. Thank you once again for joining me in my makeup shenanigans here on the channel. If you want to make sure that you don't miss anything new, make sure to subscribe before you go today. I hope that you have a wonderful day wherever you are. Bye-bye.